And that's the source of chet. The source of chet is our upside-down priorities, backwards way of thinking. You don't emphasize the right thing. You put too much emphasis on the wrong thing. Gashmias, you're being pulled by your taifa, by your yitzhah, your gaifa, all these different things. But the bottom line is, is you don't relate to Kosh the proper way. So therefore, it's nun hafuch. It's an upside-down nun. The whole point of receiving Torah was to get the nun right side up. So therefore, there were 50 days after after Leil Seder, when the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, 50 days is nun, the nun shari bina. We have 49 days of the Omer to get to the 50th. The 50th allows you to go lamal Teva. But what does it mean to be lamal Teva? It doesn't simply mean that you can do miracles, that you can live miraculously. It means that you can rise above the everyday natural world and see it how Hashem sees the world. To rise above Teva means to rise above the everyday Monday perspective, to look at the world from the big picture point of view. From the beginning of history, as Hashem says to Eev, Eev says to Gosh Baruch Hu, why me? Why now? What did I do wrong? I was doing the best I could to be at Satik. How is this possible? Knowing you, who's all merciful and wonderful and generous and kind and, 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 and fair, of all things, you are fair. Is this called fair? So what does Hashem answer back to Eev? Were you there? When I founded the earth, at the beginning of it all, do you have the big picture? Do you know all the details of history? And the, and the, the larger perspective that if you did, you wouldn't even bother asking the question in the first place? Because you look at the world with a perspective of the Nun Shari Bina, the 50 gates of understanding, and therefore see it the way I see it. And rather, instead, you would say, it's good what you've done. Why didn't I think of this earlier? That's what makes you God and me E over the end. The Gemara in Erevin says that when the Jewish people, at the end of history, after this world's over, and they're standing on the mouth of Gehenna, and they're about to enter Gehenna, to rectify their affairs in order to prepare themselves for the world to come, they say, it's good that you judged us. It's good that there's good for the righteous, and there's punishment for the evil. And they go through the whole list, and they're masking that everything that Kodesh Baruch is going to do to them even though they know it's going to be suffering for a period of time until the dinner's is over, until the tshuva has been, has been done, until the kapara, they're cleansed, they're ready, they're free to go to the world to come, they make the all of that. It's without a goof. It's no longer a nun hafuch, an upside down nun. Rather, it's the right way of looking at things. And that's why it's an even stronger connection to the beginning of the Parsha. Because Hanukkah, of course, is Yemei Bina. It's the days of understanding. It's the days of the Or Haganus. It's the days of m- miracle. The reason why the Jewish people were able to overcome the Misyavdim, who were the Hellenists, right? Who are basically the Arab Rav. People who were trying to sabotage the Jewish people, working with the Gentile nations to sabotage Torah, to overcome it, to infiltrate the ranks of Torah, and make the people become more like the Greeks. The same thing we have today. Jews working together with Gentile nations, Gentiles, in order to sabotage the efforts of the Jewish people and their right to the land and their safety, to live by Torah and to learn and to do what they have to do to be servants of God. Sabotage, that's the era of Rav, right? That was Ms. Yavnim, the Tabitha of Hanukkah. Or was Hanukkah? You may be there. Why? Because they had a flash. At that time, the menorah, the organ news, whatever it was, they had a flash, a recognition that began with a desire to rectify the situation. They looked at the world around them. It was upside down. It was a fuch. No, a fuch. It was a backwards way of thinking. There was no das. No das elokim. No clarity of thought. Evil was having its way. And they said, that can't be the world. That can't be the world. That can't be the way Hashem wants it to be. And you know something? We may die in the process of trying to rectify it, but we certainly can't live with it. We certainly can't abide by it. We certainly can't give people the impression, this is okay, it must speak. Rather, we have to be most nefesh to rectify the nun, to write the nun, to turn it over, just like in Haman's time. And Mordechai, the Esther's time, that's what Mordechai was doing. The exact same thing. He recognized and realized the numerous had fuch. So what did he do? He worked on turning it over. 
That's why Haman, when he built his gallows, he built it 50 amas high, corresponding to the nun. But he was turning it over. And he understood that the Jewish people were living with just the opposite. And that's why he thought there was an opening, an ability to be able to go in and attack the Jewish people and undermine the Jewish people. So Mordechai, the whole battle of Mordechai was to turn it right side up. So the fasting and the tshuva and pushing the point and getting to the point where Haman wanted to destroy the Jewish people, that was Mordechai's way of rectifying it, just turning that nun over from upside down, uh, you know, like a steering wheel doctor, right side up. And the moment it was turned right side up, the nun was, was turned over, the chet was overcome, which the story begins with him drinking, with Achishmash's drinking feast, and Yain corresponds to dust, it's a pouring void into itself, that's the book Redemption to Redemption, the big picture, all these more details, but that's what Mordechai was doing. And that's what Moshe was trying to do. The Erevrav comes specifically to turn it upside down, to make the Jewish people look at things backwards. So they want things that don't belong to them. They desire things that are not part of the Avodah Hashem, even though they still were keepers, and still were tzitzis, and put on tefillah, it doesn't make a difference, but still, the actual thinking is upside down. It's backwards. And then comes the anti-Semitism, and then come the nations of the world specifically, specifically, to turn it right, right to up. But not through learning Torah. Not through the doing of mitzvahs, but through the suffering of Klai Israel. Not the way they do it. It's not what we want. It's not the way to accomplish anything in a constructive, positive way. In the end, the result will be the same, for sure. But not, you know, the happy way. Too many losses along the way. So therefore, the Torah comes to warn us right here with the upside down nun, separating Purim and Purim nun. Punishment from punishment to tell us, you know how well this happens? A person does not do a chet. A person does not go against the Kishpoch. A person does not pursue the wrong things and have empty complaints and, and go off to derech unless they have an upside down way of thinking. Because the moment you go lamalim teva, the moment you look at the world from a big picture point of view, the moment you see the way a Kodesh Baruch Hu sees it, at that point, everything aligns itself correctly. Your priorities become, become a Kodesh Baruch Hu's priorities. And therefore, your decisions are totally consistent with Torah. And that's what Hanukkah is all about. That's what Hanukkah came to rectify. Yemei Bina, it was a perspective that returned to the Jewish people. And because it returned, although only a little bit, and for a, period, a short period of time. And because it did, the Jewish people were able to overcome you know, the many. The few overcame the many. And we were able to relight the menorah and get back to Besamikdash. Because that's the makam of Nun itself, of the Nun of the 50, the Nun Shared Bina. Everybody has to ask themselves at all times, every day. That's what Chuva is all about. Chuva comes from Bina, the Nun Shared Bina. All one of Chuva itself is. How much of the nun do I have? And how much of it is right side up? Do I look at the world right side up the way Hashem does, or upside down? When I look at it correctly, properly, then the Hebrew Sola, I'm following the Kurdish Baruch, wherever he goes, I'm loyal. And I am and I'm doing the right thing. And I'm part of his entourage. I'm a partner with him in the completion of my celebration. But if I'm not, I belong either to that side or to that side. Either to head over here or to head over here. But either way, I'm living an upside down reality. And unfortunately, as we find it too late very often, it blows up in our face. It backfires. Eventually, the nun has to be rectified. It has to be righted. Either it comes to us or it comes as a result of us. Either we do it through Torah mitzvahs and by being honest, you know, with self honesty and being truthful and doing that which a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants, even if it involves Mr. Nefesh, or it's imposed upon us one way or another, as has been the case so many times throughout our long and difficult history.